the throttle position sensor, and make all that make sense. Okay, it's actually a pretty important step. We've chosen at this point to keep that step manual just so everybody can see how inconsistent the bikes are. Two identical bikes, same year model, you check them, they're way off. Okay. At some point, we will make this feature automatic. So you'll have to deal with it for a little while, and I think it's a good thing for you just to kind of get an idea, you know, and, and, and see what we're, what we're dealing with. Um, the other issue, have, have, has any, have any of you ever actually taken the side off of one of these throttle bodies? Okay. Plastic gears, slippy, floppy, all that. The hesitation that people are complaining about if you really look at it close and you run your finger, if you come by the booth, I'll show you. Um, you run your finger on the motor drive, you have almost 30 degrees of rotation before the throttle plate ever moves. It's a mechanical limitation. It is not electronic. Okay, so you, the tuners, and it's just the way it is, guys. I mean, if, if, you're, if you've got the throttle jockeys, what, 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 doing this thing, and they complain about a hesitation, but you walk up to it, you roll it just a little, and then hammer it, and it's instant, you're taking up the slack in the motor and the gear lash. Okay? The guys that are doing this are breaking the teeth in the throttle box. And then what ends up happening over a period of time, he's got no throttle response. And what he has are two or three teeth inside that throttle body that are broken. Okay? Now, if the bike's under warranty and you crack that open, you're done. All right? they will know you've been in it, All right? So we also wanted to give you a way of checking that mechanism in the throttle body without having to take it apart. So that's a pretty big deal, right? Okay, so the way we do that, we've got the system installed, we're all on the same page, we've got the system plugged in, we've got the O2 sensors in, we're not gonna crank the bike yet, okay? We're good, all right. We're going to turn the bike on and hit the stop run switch. Okay. Now, first thing we're going to do, we're going to pop an air cleaner cover off. Before we crank the bike, we want to make sure that the throttle plates actually move. We have what's called a manual test for the electronic throttle control. Now I'm going to back up. Before you get started, there's three pieces of software that you need to download. All right, You've got the, um, the PC Link software does all the tuning. Okay? The TCFI data logging software is where we take live views. That's where we deal with our data. We're looking at live views, we're pulling recorded data, and we're actually doing, I would say, technical diagnostics. That's where you go, that's the software you go to to do that. So you're going to download both of those. The software we're going to access to test the throttle plate is your data log. All right, so just remember that's your, your data diagnostic portion of the software. Okay, now when you go to that, we're going to hit one at this menu. And if you listen, I don't know if you can hear it humming or not. I can operate the throttle plate without the bike run. All right, you know what's really bitching about this? You can actually do a CCP without slamming a screwdriver in there to hold it open. If you want to check cold crank and pressure, the only way, really, other way to do it now, and the way HD tells us to do it, is force the throttle plate open and, sl and slide a screwdriver in there. Right? Well, now what we do is this, and we Velcro it, and we hold it open, and we can do our cylinder pressure test, right? What we're also watching is just making sure we don't have any stripped teeth. Okay? Any questions on that? No? All right. To turn that off, we're going to do the exact same thing. Manual test. Hit zero. Turns it off. All right. We went a step further. What we call a characteristic curve test. And if we listen, when I hit the start button, 
we hear the throttle body, right? See how it's opening and closing the throttle plate on its own? I don't know if you guys can see this, okay? What it's doing, it's going through five, yeah, let's try that. Everybody see what it's doing? All right. What it, it, automatically, it's going through five different cycles. Okay, the, the, the electronic throttle stuff, there's a lot more issues than just the gears I mentioned. The return springs and all the springs, one is heavily offset from the other. All right, so we, we've, a lot of things going on in this thing. The load, the load of the actual drive motors and all this stuff, you know, it varies. All the manufacturing tolerances are just all over the place. So what this test is doing, it's opening and closing the throttle plate five times. It's forcing it closed, which is important for board throttle bodies. You know, that may be a little off kilter. It's also important because of the, your throttle shaft can have some wear in it. So we're forcing it closed to find the absolute maximum limit that the throttle plate is at. Okay, then it's forcing it open for the same exact reason. And it's going through all of these cycles and checking, and you'll hear the throttle body clicking and moving. It's doing all that to make sure the gears are there and, and make sure it's not slipping. Right? It's also checking the correlation voltages that I mentioned. It's checking all of that. All right? And it gives us a neat little chart. The green line, some voltage. That means that our 2.5 and 2.5, they add up. And we know we're good. These two lines represent the rising and falling and the opening and closing of the motor. Because when the motor turns, we're also operating a throttle position system, right? Okay. When you do this test, it should look like that. It's as simple as that. All right. If you get one where this voltage is down here, you've got a correlation error in there somewhere. Now, if what's interesting about the fly-by-wire stuff, like I said, I run a shop. The reason I'm telling you guys this is this is stuff I know you're going to run into. Okay. Believe it or not, on the falling side, if the voltage isn't consistent, the bike will still run and you'll never know it. So kind of that throws a little deal in there. You may or may not get a check engine light in that case. The only time it'll really go into limp mode is if there's complete loss of correlation between the two. The voltages can be off and it still run. Okay? So anyway, point being, if you do that test on that bike and the tractor looks like that, you know the throttle body's good. Uh, you said about the falling. On the negative side, see the positive side going up to five. Does it show you on the chart how how it drops, how far down below zero it drops? On this chart? No. Mm -hmm. Can you see that anywhere? <laughs> yes. Okay. It, a data logging thing. Okay. Yeah. What, what this, the, the idea behind this is, is the quick cross -check. <coughs> If you had anything either in your rising and falling side, if it didn't total five volts, because again, it's operating the motor, it's checking both sides with that green line. If at any point it didn't total five, it would tell you there. Oh. I mean, you, you would see it. We're calling it some voltage because it's adding the rising and the falling together. So if at any point that doesn't total five, it would tell you. Okay. Yes. So what causes this coalition problem? Wiring? Uh, inconsistencies in the throttle bodies, shapes of the throttle bodies, throttle plates. Um, believe it or not, a twist grip is a. You mean a wore out bore or a one that's been bore? one that's been bored slightly off center. And I'm talking a thou, a thou and a half. Really? Yes, can make a big difference. The inconsistencies in the twist grip sensors. Anything with non-stock harnesses. Bars, extended wires. Um, I've seen. Uh, what do you mean? Any, any, if, all, if the, any, all the extended wire handlebar kits will cause that. You mean? It can. Yes. Yeah. Just by extending the wires. Yeah. It can. What it? What it? And I say it can. I mean, I install them all the time, right? It all depends on the the tolerances manufacturer.